Good morning, everyone. Today I want to talk about the imbalanced guard keystone and do a little bit more of a focused deep dive on this instead of the the big uh, broad scope guides that I've released for my last couple of videos. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, what does a keystone do? 100% chance to defend with double armor is the upside of the keystone, and that just means that damage is calculated as though you have twice the amount of armor that you actually do. Keep in mind this is not the same as doubling your armor value because there are mechanics that care about your true armor value, such as Molten Shell. Damage reduction is capped at 50%, whereas it is normally 90%. Uh, technically, the wording is that all types of damage reduction are capped at 50%, but currently in the game, physical damage reduction is the only type that exists unless you take the Transcendence Keystone. Uh, other sources of damage mitigation, such as elemental resistances, lesser reduced damage taken, etc., are unaffected by this cap. So a lot of times I obscure math in my uh, discussions about mechanics, but I actually think it's important to show the equation for how damage reduction is calculated for armor because there's a breakpoint we're going to touch on on the next slide. Uh, but just remember that physical damage reduction calculated from this equation is aggregated with other sources of physical damage reduction, such as endurance charges. As well, uh, bigger hits ignore armor more effectively, and that is because of this bit right here in the equation, 10 times raw damage being in the denominator. So what are the implications for imbalanced guard? If you have no other sources of physical damage reduction, then the threshold above which uh, imbalanced guard helps you is one-tenth of your armor value. So any hit that is larger than one-tenth of your armor value benefits from imbalanced guard. Any hit that is below that threshold, however, you will actually receive more damage if you have the imbalanced guard keystone spec. So if you have other sources of physical damage reduction, it actually raises this cap, sort of punishes you more. Uh, so in a scenario where you have three endurance charges, which is a somewhat common one, you get 12% physical damage reduction. This cap raises it to it's something like 16 or 17% of your total armor. So if you have three endurance charges, any hit below 16 or 17% armor uh, will hurt you more than it would if you did not have the keystone spec. So, and the, the amount that it hurts you progresses as the hit gets smaller, up to the point at which, without the keystone, you would have mitigated 90% of the damage, but now you're only mitigating 50%. In those situations, if you had a ton of really small hits coming in, your EHP against uh, that sized physical hit would be reduced by 80%. Thankfully, most of the time, hits that small aren't particularly threatening to your character. If you have some other defensive layers to combat this, some recovery for whatever your HP pool is comprised of, and we'll touch on uh, how to mitigate that downside. Um, but it does help against the biggest hits in the game. So when do you encounter these really large hits? When is it good? What type of content is it good against? Boss fights? boss fights just hit harder than your average enemy. Uh, deep delving, and we're talking like hardcore deep delving where you still care about defense, not the super deep delving that you see on softcore sometimes where any point, any amount of defense is pointless and you need to focus 100% on damage. We're not talking about that kind of delving. Certain map mods, uh, basically anything that makes the size of the incoming hit greater. So crit is kind of the big one when monsters get crit chance and crit multi, um, or if they get power charges, because that makes the size of their hit a lot larger, and so any of those um, spiky incoming hits will be mitigated more effectively by imbalanced guard. Anything where there's a high density of rare monsters, just because auras from rare monsters can stack up and result in some pretty nasty hits. So think uh, something like Legion if you bust out half a dozen rares that are all sitting on top of each other. So synergies, or ways to mitigate the downside. Defensive layers like block, dodge, and evasion, something like blind, anything that is really good at minimizing the amount of damage coming in from lots of small hits. And so these chance-based forms of evasion are extremely effective, 
against small hits because they fairly reliably uh, mitigate whatever percentage of that stat they're providing in, in incoming damage. Um, I really like Immortal Call with Imbalanced Guard because when it gobbles up the endurance charges, uh, it makes its own effect more powerful while actually simultaneously making the effect of Imbalanced Guard greater as well. And because it provides a less damage taken modifier for physical damage, uh, this is unaffected by the Imbalanced Guard Keystone. The Transcendence Keystone is one that I, I listed as a synergy, though it's more like a specific kind of build. You do have to set up the build in a certain way. It's not the way a lot of Transcendence characters build, which is that they stack tons of armor and then take a lot of the stat that makes it so incoming damage is received as elemental damage and just try to sort of ignore physical damage mitigation and convert as much of that to elemental as possible. But rather, with the Imbalanced Guard Keystone, what you can do is uh, have a lot of sources of percent physical damage reduction. Think like a Juggernaut with a lot of Endurance Charges to deal with physical damage, and then have your armor apply to elemental damage so that you get sort of a, a nice chunk of mitigation against both, but it's, uh, it's not stacked up to the extreme in either case. It's good with the Acrobatics Keystone. Acrobatics cuts your armor in half. This doubles your armor, so essentially this neutralizes the armor downside of Acrobatics. Uh, Two-handed or dual-wield setups like it just because they can't get as much armor as a shield setup, because shields give you a ton of armor. High Sustain is helpful because Sustain is really useful in shrugging off lots of small hits, so a steady flow of small hits is um, is typically not that threatening if you have good recovery, and as well, any type of recovery tends to be good with mitigation because over time it's kind of like having a bigger HP pool, which then gets multiplied by, uh, you know, whatever mitigation factors you have. And then minus X physical damage from hits is a really powerful stat with this because it is most effective against really tiny hits. It can completely nullify the smallest of hits. So the types of hits where you are punished the most by the imbalanced guard keystone are uh, mitigated highly effectively by this particular stat. It's, I think, an underused stat in general, but in this case, it's really, really good. So in conclusion, who should take this? Basically, you don't want too much investment in armor or physical damage reduction, at least the combination of the two, because if you have a lot of both, then the downside of imbalanced guard is just greater than the upside. So you need a small to moderate investment in both uh, in order to benefit from the upside without being punished too much by the downside. And basically, the more armor you have, the less percent physical damage reduction you want, and vice versa. You can see how, too, on a character that has very little armor, something like 100 armor, there's basically no point in taking the Imbalanced Guard Keystone because it's going from doing nothing to still doing nothing. And if you have an extremely high amount, then again, the downside is too great. So I like this Keystone in that it promotes sort of a moderate investment, whereas most Keystones promote an extreme amount of investment in order to benefit, and there's exceptions to that, but there's a lot of keystones, the, the sort of like really powerful keystones, and so it, it's kind of interesting in that way. I think that you, you have to, you know, make your build a Goldilocks build where you get just the right amount to really benefit from this particular stat. Um, remember to fill in the gap with other defensive layers. You want to combine this with things that, that help to shore up that weakness of uh, you know, taking more, a lot more damage from lots of little hits. And then it helps to tackle really difficult content, so if you plan on pushing any of the types of content that I'm describing, you indiscriminately roll, you know, high-tier map mods without much consideration for having three or four damage modifiers on them or whatever, then you'll probably find this helpful if all of these other things are true. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I think the keystones highly underrated. Uh, it's also going to be better in the upcoming patch. I just looked at the patch notes for Expedition and saw that Granite Flasks are having the base armor value they provide cut in half, so that is a big boost to something like this, where it now becomes harder to have a high investment armor character. Uh, 
And so uh, I think it's, I'm not thinking it's going to see increased use, but I think it should see increased use if people adapt properly to some of the upcoming changes. So with all that said, I do hope to do some more Keystone deep dives in the future. If you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know and come on back and check it out when, uh, when I release those videos.